Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to Louis Gisto Field. Pleased to bring you some Crawdads baseball here on the Walnut Creek Crawdads streaming network. I can pitch to Pamelia. He takes this to the opposite field, and will it stay fair? It does. Curran will come around third to score. Back-to-back -back doubles for the Crawdads. First pitch to Hans is hit hard over to Werner. He's up with it, throws the first in time, and a great pick by Dabs. One-two pitch, here it is. Fastball swung on and missed, and Brooks walks the tightrope, leaves two runners stranded, and it's still a 3-0 lead for the Crawdads. Pitch here is taken to left by Muniz, and that is gone. A three-run homer for Diego Muniz, and was there any doubt about that ball? 0-2 pitch to Diego. Here it is, and Muniz hits this high into left field, and that is going to leave the park as well. The second home run for Diego Muniz. And a swing and a miss on a high fastball away. Montgomery goes down fishing, and that is strikeout number eight for Garza. 1-2 pitch here from Garza. Swing and a miss. Garza has everything working this afternoon. Another strikeout. Aiden Schott going to look to put the ball in play here. Payoff pitch is lined straight up the middle. And here comes Kern Ozawa Burns. He rounds third. Selna waves him home. Ozawa Burns crosses home plate. Wow. Oh, pitch. Dardar hits this high and deep to center field. Going back on it is David. And that has left the park. Bye-bye baseball. Dardar has a one-out solo homer here in the top of the second. Welcome to Danville, California. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alon say joined by Austin Oda for some Crawdads baseball. The Crawdads come in 4-4, four and 2-3 four, and three in league play. They're going to be... Squaring off against the Solano Mudcats, who are five and four overall and four and two in CCL North League play. Solano currently in second place, just uh, half a game behind Healdsburg. Healdsburg, who's three and one in league play. Healdsburg, who was here yesterday and absolutely boat raced the Crawdads sixteen to two. The Crawdads have only scored seven runs in their past three games. One on Sunday, four. Back on Tuesday and yesterday, just getting two as well. For the Crawdads on the mound today, it's going to be Ryan Fleming. Fleming, who has a fastball slurve and a changeup, will look to keep this Solano Mudcat offense in check. And for Solano, it's going to be Andrew Stapleton. We'll see what the righty Fleming has today for the Crawdads on the mound. The lineup for the Mudcats, it's going to be Kenny DeCelli, a returner from last summer, leading off. He's in center field. Then it's going to be Tyler Bassetti, the shortstop, batting second. Cole Santander, the designated hitter, batting third. Alejandro Lara, who's in right field, he'll be batting cleanup. Jared Wood, the second baseman, batting fifth. Trey Topping, batting sixth. He's behind the plate. Caleb Lamley, the left fielder, batting seventh. Noah Garcia, the first baseman, batting eighth. And rounding out the lineup is Jaden Jones, the third baseman, for Solano. Solano has had a very good start to their season thus far, a lot better than last year. Last year they were, I believe, in last place. They finished in the CCL North, and this year much, much different. Uh, this team actually came from behind and beat the Crawdads 9-8 to eight last Saturday. So the Crawdads want to even things up for this past week of baseball. The Crawdads have already beaten Solano once, but uh, losing 9-8 in a game that you're ahead 8-4 to four in is, is a real backbreaker. The defense for the Crawdads, it's going to be Zach DeHero behind the dish. This afternoon, Ryan Brome over at first. Ryan Ellis, the second baseman as usual. Jacob Craig over at third base. Matt King at shortstop once again, just like yesterday. And the outfield with a little bit of a different look. Donnelly was in left field yesterday, but today it'll be Casey Cummings in center. It's Coleman Schmidt and the aforementioned Donnelly now in right this afternoon. Oh, Kenny DeCelli getting ready to lead things off for today's contest. 
The umpires, Harvey Maxey behind home plate, Ron McGath over at first, and Kate Hart at third. First pitch here from Fleming, and Ryan misses low, and the count one and oh. 72 degrees here at game time. First pitch at 4.02. The 1-0 pitch, this misses low, and the count 2 and 0. DeCelli hitting 243, does have a double and six RBIs. And Fleming fires. This pitch is hit deep to left field, but it'll hang up for the left fielder Cummings, who has it right near the left field line and puts it away for out number one. Well, that'll bring on Tyler Bassetti, who's the second best hitter average-wise here on this Mudcat team. He's hitting 357, just 14 at bat, so still early. Does have a double and an RBI, but uh, more importantly, if he does get on the base paths, he can steal a base. He already has one so far this summer, and he's not going to strike out a whole lot. He's walked four times and struck out only three, so more walks than strikeouts. Fleming has his sign from DeHero, fires a fastball in, but misses low in the count 1 and 0. Oh. Tyler Bosetti, at NCAA record holder, most consecutive games with a whole ru home run, nine straight games in 2021. Oh, my goodness. The 1-0 -oh pitch, this misses high and in, Bosetti takes. Doesn't have your traditional power hitter build. Nine straight home runs over a UNR? In 2021. And then only at, only at three. This, this last season. That's interesting. Sometimes it goes that way, I guess. The 2-0 pitch. This is hit foul over near the Solano dugout. Solano down the third base line. The Crawdads down the first base line. Tejero behind the plate today. Sammy Diaz getting the break. I was wondering where I had heard this name before, before the game when we were talking about it. Now, now I remember. The 2-1. This is hit high into left center. Who's going to have it? Will it be Schmidt or Cummings? Cummings makes the play on it for out number two. So two straight fly balls that are fielded by Casey Cummings. And there are two away here in the top of the first. Already an effective outing thus far for Ryan Fleming being very efficient. And here is Cole Santander designated hitter this afternoon for Solano. The wind, much like yesterday, blowing in from the outfield. And here's the pitch. This is hit on the ground over to Matt King. It's short, who's up with it. Throws to first, and an easy one, two, three, top of the first for Ryan Fleming. So very good job for the Crawdads pitching staff so far. I'm obviously very early, but... We're looking to see this pitching staff play a complete game as the back end, the bullpen, really hasn't been able to do that yet so much this season. But uh, a good start here for Ryan Fleming, able to get the first three batters in order. It's still nothing, nothing. Bottom of the first coming up. Crawdads up to bat. It'll be Schmidt, Duroff, and Brome when we return here on the Crawdads Streaming Network. Bottom of the first here in Danville, California from Monta Vista, the third game of a three-game homestand for the Crawdads. They so far one and one on Tuesday, beat the Sonoma Stompers four to three. Yesterday dropping the game to the North Division leading Healdsburg Prune Packers 16 to two. And here it is nothing, nothing with the Crawdads looking to finish his homestand two and one. 
as they are on the road tomorrow in Healdsburg against the Prune Packers up at Memorial Field. And that'll be at 6 p.m. So it's going to be Schmidt, then Brian Duroff and Ryan Brome, the first three batters for the Crawdads. Stapleton on the mound for Solano. Stapleton one and one so far with a 7-5 ERA. This is his third start of the summer. He's thrown six innings, struck out five. This pitch is fouled back near the press booth and nearly a ball for Austin Oda. I mean, I've been talking this whole summer about how much I wanted to catch one all year. Uh, you know, I didn't know if the trajectory would be correct for the ball to get over the cage and then fly in here. After seeing that one, I, th I think it could happen. And that was almost perfect. Now Schmidt leading the Crawdads batting this year, hitting over 420 as he hammers this out to center field. Running back on it is DeCelli, and he will watch it leave the ballpark. You can kiss that baby goodbye. A leadoff home run for Coleman Schmidt. It is now 1-0 here in the bottom of the first. And already, just a couple pitches into this game, a whole different feel from yesterday's game. I mean, a clean first inning where the Crawdads don't give up any runs, then Coleman Schmidt hitting one right over the batter's eye. That ball was clobbered. That was huge to dead center. DeCelli, the center fielder, just ran out of room. And here is Brian DeRoff. That is Coleman Schmidt's third home run of the summer. And here's Brian Duroff, who also has some good pop in the bat. He has a home run and five RBIs, hitting 320. 321, that is, as this pitch misses. And count one and zero. Oh. A very good start for the Crawdads. Much better than yesterday, where their first run came off of a balk. Here's the pitch from Stapleton, and this is hit on the ground, fielded by the third baseman, Jones. And actually, a little bit of a stumble out there at third. Not able to make the play on it, so that'll be an yeah, that'll be an E five all the way. That's how it scored. Yeah, he was coming over Jones and lost his footing. Won. When yeah, that happened, he lost the ball. Yeah, and, he was unable and to make a throw. But he was trying to gather into the throwing hand, and you know it's awfully dusty out there. I was a little bit surprised to see that. So an E five as Duroff reaches, and here's Ryan Brome. First pitch to Brome. This is hit foul over the screen. The count 0 and 1. A little bit of a gift there from Solano to the Crawdads. Yesterday it was the E5s for the Crawdads that really hurt them. Pickoff move from Stapleton, a good one too. Very good spin and a very accurate throw over to the first baseman. But not in time as Duroff safe once again. Pitch misses in no called a strike late strike call there by Harvey Maxey count O and two you could hear the shouts of runner Duroff who is the designated hitter today not playing at first did not go and the count O and two catcher setting up outside Stapleton delivers this is hit to the opposite field that's going to land fair and we'll see if this is a double. For Brome, it is. Duroff is rounding third as there's trouble digging the ball out there in left field. And that's an RBI double for Ryan Brome. So Duroff scores because of the fact that Brome was able to put good wood on the baseball. And Duroff was able to get on base because of the E5 by Jaden Jones over there at third base for Solano. And already it's 2-0 Crawdads. And in an 0-2 count, Ryan Brom not afraid to hit the ball, taking it the other way. Fastball on the outer half of the plate. He might have gotten cheated a little bit on the pitch before that I don't think either of us really thought was a strike. A little high, wasn't it? A little high, a little tight. A nice at bat. Oh, here is Jacob Krieg hitting 250 with a runner in scoring position now. Ryan Brom just off of second. First pitch from Stapleton is an off-speed one that he drops in for strike number one. Count 0 and 1, still nobody out. The Crawdads up 2 0. On deck is Ryan Ellis. And the 0 1 to the Crawdad third baseman. Here it is. 
Pitch, check swung on by Craig, and it's in there for a strike regardless in the count 0 and 2. Solano very surprising so far this summer. 5 and 4 overall, but more surprising is their 4 and 2 North Division record. Did not have that success last summer, but they're finding it early here. Stapleton looks back at second. And the pitch, here's a curveball that misses in. And the count a ball and two strikes to Jacob Craig. If I'm Jacob Craig, I'm probably not taking that pitch again in a two strike count. You're going to have to nice, bat. Yeah. Nice uh, front door slider. A one, two. Stapleton looking to put up an out here. And the pitch. There's that same pitch again. This misses a little bit higher and inside. And the count even at two balls and two strikes. Craig looking to gap one here. If he can get a fastball center cut, he can go either way with it. Got a very good bat, even though he's only batting 250. This is his 25th at bat of the summer. The 2 2. This misses low and away, and the count runs full 3 and 2. So if you're just joining us, Coleman Schmidt started things off with a bang, a big fly to dead center. Then Duroff was able to get on to first because of an E5. Jones over there on the left side for Solano. Ryan Brohm drove in Duroff. With an RBI double, he's standing just off of second and the 3-2 to Craig, who jams this high off the lower end of the baseball bat. It's fielded by Bassetti behind his shortstop position for out number one. Jacob Craig at the plate, really struggling right now. He's now over his last 12, and a guy that started out the season extremely hot and looked like he would be one of the best players for this team. I mean, he's still hitting in the four hole. It's clear that Coach Cummings has a lot of faith in him. This hasn't really been putting good wood on the ball. And much can be much of the same can be said about Ryan Ellis, who started off pretty hot, but now he's batting at 226, still looking for his first home run of the summer. Does have an RBI and three walks, however. Actually, a few more after walking a few times yesterday. Is this pitch a fastball misses high and away to the lefty Ellis? Did he hit a home run in the game that hasn't been completed yet? Yes, so he does so technically he have a home run. It's just not official. <laughs> Poor kid. Not yet, yeah. Still looking for his first officially scored home run as this fastball misses outside in the count 2-0. Oh. The defense for... Solano, Trey Toppings, the catcher behind the plate. Garcia over at first. Wood, the second baseman. Jones, the third baseman. Bassetti at short. In left field is Lamley as the 2-0 comes. Here's a fastball. That hits the outside corner, and it's 2-1. DeCelli in center, and Alejandro Lara over in right. So 2-1. Here to Ryan Ellis. Does have some power to the pull side. And the 2-1 pitch. Swings and a miss. Swing and a miss on a very good slider there. Kind of left it up. But the off speed fooled Ellis. And the count two balls and two strikes with one away. Rome still over on second base. Wants to come home. 2-2 pitch to Ellis. And this pitch misses away, and the count three balls and two strikes. You talked about it a lot yesterday. Austin Brome can make so much happen with his hustle. We've already seen him with an extra base hit today for the dads, helping them get this 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. And the payoff pitch, Ellis just fights this off down the left field line, and we'll see 3-2 again. Beautiful day out here in Danville, California, just off of Stone Valley Road. Take the 680 in. In the foothills here. But it is windy, and it's blowing in. The 3-2. 
And this is hit to right field. Going back on it is Lara, and he makes the catch at the warning track. Just ran out of steam, and you have to accredit that to the wind that's blowing in from center and right field. And really, for all the compliments we've been giving to Ryan Brome, he read that ball thinking it was going to drop, and I'm, I'm not sure why he was so far off the bag because even if he holds at the second base bag and the ball is dropped, he has the speed to be able to come around, and if the ball's caught, he can tag up and go to third. But because he did, because he was halfway to third base already, he had to retreat once the ball was caught, and he stays at second. I think he thought that was going to get over Lara's head, and Lara just made a great over-the-shoulder catch out there and right. And the first pitch to the shortstop, Matt King, righty against righty, is in there for strike number one. King hitting 250, has a couple of RBIs, has walked three times so far this summer. He's at shortstop today for the Dads. This pitch swung on and missed. A fastball that sunk low and away there, and the count 0 and 2. Crawdads lead 2 to nothing. One run earned, one not. The Coleman Schmidt, obviously, his home run. That is the earned run. The 0-2, the runner goes, and Brome is going to be thrown out over at third. A good, strong throw from Toppings. Not a great jump from Ryan Brome, and that is the third out of the first. So, after one, it is 2-0 Crawdads. Coleman Schmidt goes deep. The dead center, and then an RBI double from Ryan Brome that scored Duroff as the inning ends with Ryan Brome being thrown out, trying to steal third. So we'll be back with the top of the second here on the Crawdads Streaming Network. Off the top of the second inning for Solano, the right fielder, number one, Alejandro Ferrara. Back here in Danville, California, top of the second inning, the Crawdads with an early 2 nothing lead. It's going to be 4, 5, and 6 for Solano, Laura, then Jared Wood, and Trey Topping. So here is the right fielder, Alejandro Laura, as Laura promptly sends this into center on the ground, and that'll be a leadoff single. Here in the top of the second for Solano. Just kind of stuck the bat out over the heart of the plate. Didn't get great wood on it, but was able to take it right back up the middle. A runner on. And here is Jared Wood. First pitch from Fleming to Wood, and this has popped up high, but it'll fall out of play. Tejero running over to the Solano dugout. Batting pitch for Solano, the second baseman number 12, Jared Wood. Jared Wood hitting 318. A couple of RBIs and a double to his name. Laura just off of first, and the 0-1. Wood takes, and this misses low and away. And the count even at 1-1. One and one. Well, Laura right back up the middle. 
to lead off the top of the second. And the 1-1 pitch. This is hit very high on the infield. And who's going to take it? It's going to be Matt King. And it will not be a repeat of yesterday as he squeezes this where there was a huge pop-up right over the pitcher's mound and King stumbled. This time, no obstacles to traverse out there. And that's out number one. It's good to see the defense making plays early. None have been too difficult, but I mean, probably about three or four of the five errors that were made yesterday you could say the same thing about. Oh, here is Topping, the catcher. Topping hitting just under 300 at 292. And the first pitch to Trey. This miss is low and away. Good job blocking it by Tejero. The runner, Laura, cannot go anywhere. He's still over at first. Coleman Schmidt with the big blast to get things started in a great way for the dads this afternoon. And the 1-0. This misses low. Looked like a good fastball right around the knees, but called a ball by Harvey Maxey behind the plate, and the count 2-0. The victory today. The Crawdads have a chance to get back above 500, 5-4 five and four overall. They're 4-4 four and four right now. Here's a fastball in the inner half. And that's called a strike. And the 2 1 pitch on the way. Two one from Fleming. This is hit on the ground over to Matt King, and he goes a second for one. The relay from Ellis cannot be turned. He'll just get the force at second. Just two high hops. Wasn't able to get the speed of topping. He's a catcher, but he made it down the line pretty hard. He did. He really hustled. Um, we've seen Tejero hustle some balls out uh, that have been hit on the infield. Uh, obviously, with topping, he's a little smaller for a catcher, unlike Sammy Diaz, who's just, you know, a very large man. A lot of muscle and a check swing here, and this is going to be fielded by Fleming, who tosses on to first in time to get rid of Caleb Lamley. So the Crawdads do allow a runner to reach. However, Fleming able to navigate out of things and put up another scoreless frame. It is still 2 nothing. Bottom of the second coming up when we return here on the Crawdads Streaming Network. Bottom of the second inning from Monta Vista High School. The Crawdads currently lead 2-0 against their North Division rival, the Solano Mudcats. So far, a home run from Coleman Schmidt and an RBI double from Ryan Brome. And here is Matt King. It'll be Matt King, Joey Donnelly, and Zach DeHaro. King was up to bat back in the first, however... Ryan Brome was caught stealing to end the inning, so King will get another go at it. The first pitch to King, and here's a fastball on the outside corner for strike number one. King was in an 0-2 hole last at bat, so probably trying to not get in that same hole here. The 0-1, this misses low and inside, and the count even 1-1. One one. Yeah, as you mentioned, he wasn't an 0-2 hole, and... 
I mean, in some ways, lucky for him, he gets another chance at the at-bat. Not good for the Crawdads if Brome was thrown out over at third. And the 1-1 from Stapleton. Stapleton able to fire a pretty good fastball that's fought off at the plate by King, and it's 1-2. and two. And really, even if with that speed that we've been talking about for Brome, it was pretty confusing on why he tried to take third in that situation. That yeah, was interesting. It was an 0-2 count. There were two away, and... Just not a situation that you want to see the runner go as this pitch is fouled away as well. And the count one and two. Stapleton's last start was on June 8th. That was in a 19-3 to loss against the Crawdads. That was a big offensive game for Walnut Creek. Gave up seven runs, only three of them earned. Was only able to last two innings. A count, a ball, and two strikes here to the leadoff hitter, Matt King. And the pitch to King. Here's a fastball, perfect, on the outer half of the plate. Freezes King, and he goes down looking. And the struggles continue for Matt King, now one for his first 10 as a crawdad. And so he's batting an even 100. Was batting 111. Uh, here is Joey Donnelly. Donnelly was in left field yesterday for the Dads. He's in right field today. Did have a home run back in the fifth yesterday. The first pitch of Donnelly is a strike. And, I mean, for Matt King, this is a guy that was really good this season at UTSA. He made the conference all-freshman team. He only a 237, but played a really good shortstop, and we just haven't seen much of that so far from him. And Donnelly chops this foul down the first base line. All right, US, uh, U USTA, UTSA team, the Roadrunners, they got some players over there, a few former players from last year uh, of the Crawdads are over at UTSA, most notably Daniel Garza, the pitcher. But, uh, yeah, Matt King, you'd like to see the bat go get going here during the summer. As Donnelly, who's hitting 294, takes another hack at this and chops this fair, fielded by Stapleton, who tosses on to first for out number two. Oh, here comes Zach Tejero. Tejero, who had some trouble in the batter's box last summer, is having a complete revitalization this summer offensively as he's hitting 364. He's driven in five. And he's also walked four times. First pitch here to Tejero, and he swings through it. Strike number one. It's good to see him back in the lineup. It always, is. Always a good day when Zach Tejero's catching. Tejero is one of those guys who is always going to put maximum effort in the 0-1 pitch, this misses low, and Tejero takes, and the count even at a ball and a strike. Still waiting for Tommy Splain to get here. The third or fourth catcher for the Crawdads, if you want to catch uh, count Donnelly as a catcher, as this pitch misses low and in, and the count two and one. I mean, we've both talked about this. Tommy Splain has the potential to be one of the best players on this team this year, so... He's a big piece that the crowd ads are missing. He does. The 2-1 pitch. That's in there for strike number two. The only issue with playing is not a lot of people have seen him play because he's had to sit behind Daniel Susak. At least not a lot of people have seen him catch. He played a lot this year, but a lot of times <laughs> it was at first base. Behind the plate, which is his natural position. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed in the dirt, and the tag applied there by topping, and now he'll have to throw on to first, and the play is made. I wonder if he missed the tag outright or if he touched the jersey and it just wasn't called by Maxi there behind the dish, but it doesn't matter. The crawdads go down one, two, and three. But, yeah, it's playing. It would be good to see him uh, actually get a full summer worth of catching work in here for the dads. But at any rate... After two, it is two nothing, and the Crawdads still lead. Top of the third coming up here on the Crawdads Streaming Network.
Top of the third inning. Crawdads lead two to nothing. It'll be eight, nine, and one for Solano. Noah Garcia, then Jaden Jones, and the number one hitter, Kenny DeCelli. Noah Garcia, left-handed bat. He also pitches for Solano. Garcia hitting just 158. This will be his 20th at bat of the summer. First pitch here from Fleming, and Garcia takes it to the opposite field, and it drops down and left in front of Casey Cummings, and that's a leadoff single. So back-to-back -back innings for Solano, where they've been able to get the leadoff man on. It was Laura last inning, and here it's Noah Garcia. Here comes the third baseman for Solano, Jaden Jones, hitting an even 300. And the first pitch to Jones is that slur from Fleming and called for a strike. The inner half to the right-handed batter, Jones. Garcia off of first. Holding the runner on is Brome. And the 0-1 pitch, showing bunt there was Jones. And he may have actually foul-tipped that into the mitt. Would have been a strike anyway as he did not pull the bunt back in the count 0-2. Yeah, he was definitely trying to make contact with the ball there on the bunt attempt. He left it out there on the off-speed, <clears throat> maybe just trying to dead ball it right there in front of the plate onto the grass. And the 0-2 from Fleming as this is hit on the ground over to third. Craig has it, throws a second for one. Ellis the relay in time, and that is a double play for the dad. So quickly that leadoff runner uh, for Solano eliminated here, and there's two outs up there on the scoreboard. Really nice job by the infield there. Very good pitch to induce some weak contact after getting the hitter Jones in an 0-2 hole. And quickly two away. And I think that play was really big from Jacob Craig because he's struggled defensively so far this season. And really what it's been is he's been rushing. And that time all he was worried about was the runner at second. He wasn't worried about hurrying to get the double play. Getting the runner at second was his first priority, and he showed it there. Yeah, he just trusted his arm and turned immediately. Didn't really pump with it too many times. He just fired over to Ellis. Uh, here's Kenny DeCelli who flew out. In the first, as this pitch misses low in the count, 1-0. and oh. Kelly flew out to left field. And the 1-0 oh here from Fleming. And this misses low in the count, two balls and no strikes. Doesn't seem like it's really bothered Ryan Fleming out there on the mound when he's gotten behind in the count. No, he's been very efficient today. Uh, he knows he has good stuff. Can bust that slurve out for a strike when he needs to. This pitch, another weak bouncer over to King, and a throw from King on to first, and a good stretch there by Brome, and finally the out call made by Ron McGath over at first. Oh, one, two, three. Go the Solano Mudcats. They were able to get a leadoff single, but then the big double play for the Crawdads, and Craig did a great job at third, getting that over to second, and Ellis did the rest, getting it to first base. So Solano does get a hit, but nothing comes of it. And after two and a half, it is still 2 nothing. Crawdads here in Danville, California. On a creek up to bat, Casey Cummings leading off 9-1-2 and two for the Dads. And the 200-hitting left fielder takes the first pitch, low and away for a ball. Cummings' last hit 
It was on June 11th against these very same Mudcats. However, it was in Solano. The 1-0. And this is a fastball down the heart of the plate for strike one. Count even. Crawdads with an early 2-0 lead. The 1-1. Cummings takes again. And the count one and two. It's two straight pitches right down the middle that Cummings has taken. And the one-two to Casey as he hits this out to center. Doesn't have to move a whole lot, does DeCelli, and he squeezes it for out number one. Tough job to try to get a, a single on the board or, or get some good wood on the baseball when you're down in the count one-two and you see two really good pitches maybe to hit. Did Casey Cummings earlier in the at-bat, and then he's down 1-2, and he has to protect Austin and just kind of flung the bat at that one. Yeah, it didn't even really seem like he was very interested in swing at e swinging at either of the first two pitches he saw in that at-bat. I think he's able to trust himself with two strikes, and, and I don't blame him. That's the mindset you want to go up there with as a hitter, but didn't really get good wood on that last pitch he saw. Here's Coleman Schmidt, one for one today with a solo home run. He has to duck out of the way of a curveball that Stapleton cannot get on top of. And the count, 1-0. and oh. And Coleman Schmidt did get very good wood on the, 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 oh. the pitch he saw last at bat. He swung the bat with some major authority and sent it right over the batter's eye, which also acts as the center field fence. Hit that to dead center against the wind. The 1-0 pitch. This misses low and away, and it's 2-0. and oh. Schmidt in a good hitter's count here. See if he elects to swing for the fences once again. If it can keyhole a fastball from Stapleton. The 2-0. There was a fastball. Center cut. And taken all the way by Schmidt. The count 2 and 1. Two one to Schmidt. And this is fouled away. Just a little late on the fastball there was Schmitty. Hit it over the Crawdads dugout. And the count even at two and two. Stapleton has settled a bit since the first. And the two two. Another hard hit fastball deep to center field, and he does it again. Kiss that baby goodbye. Round them all. Coleman Schmidt. Holy smokes. Same exact pitch, same exact spot, and he belts it over the center field wall. He is two for two with two solo jacks. Think you've seen the ball well right now? I'll say. Wow. A Coleman Schmidt putting on BP. Absolute display of raw power here early. And he's got two of the Crawdads, three runs. It is three to nothing. I think it's fair to say he's making up for that, that rough game yesterday. Yes, he is. He had some, uh, some rough times out there at third. This pitch misses high and away to Brian DeRoff. Coleman Schmidt putting on a show. Kenny DeCelli just keeps running out of real estate out there in center. The 1-0 pitch. This misses low and outside. Fastball there. And the count quickly 2-0. DeRoff 0-for-1. Did reach first base. That was an error on the third baseman, Jaden Jones. A ball that he could not come up with. And here's the curveball that comes in for a strike. And the count 2-1. and one. Both Stapleton and Fleming kind of throw a slurve. This pitch bounces up to topping. And the count, three and one. Now Coleman Schmidt quickly with a couple of home runs this afternoon. Sparking the offense for the Crawdads. As this pitch in there on the outside corner, count three and two. It's always a good day when you 
double your season total in home runs. He's up to four now and one RBI away from ten on the season. As this pitch is connected with by Duroff, but it'll hang up in right field for Lara. And there's two away. Uh, here's Ryan Brome, who had an RBI double in the first, but then was caught stealing. Trying to go from second to third, and that ended the first inning. First pitch here to Brougham, and he fouls this off the end of the bat. Count 0-1. By the way, Coleman Schmidt now league leader in home runs, both in conference play and overall. And Coleman Schmidt showing off some power. Pitch here misses low, and if Coleman keeps that up, I mean, what is it, game 10 today? He's already got four home runs. He could get up. He's on pace for close to 20. This pitch taken the other way, but that will land foul down the left field line. Ryan Brome, just a little late there. I mean, if, if Schmidt could keep that up, that would be huge, not only for this team, but for him personally. He's a guy that's fighting for a spot in the outfield at St. Mary's next year. The one two to Brome. This misses away, and the count even at two balls and two strikes. St. Mary's, where the Crawdads played last summer. Schmidt, two home runs already this afternoon. It's 3 nothing Dads. Two and two pitch, and swing and a miss there from Ryan Brohm. And Stapleton able to get out of the inning, but he does surrender a solo blast to deep center once again to Coleman Schmidt. It is 3 nothing Crawdads. Top of the fourth inning coming your way with Austin Oda on the call when we return here on the Crawdads Streaming Network. Back here for the top of the fourth inning in Danville, California. The Crawdads facing the Solano Mudcats. Three to nothing is the score after three full frames. Coleman Schmidt, two home runs on the day already. Two for two with two home runs and two RBI. He's having a good day so far. Ryan Fleming still out on the hill. He's been very, very good so far for the Crawdads. Three shutout innings, only allowing two hits. Still hasn't walked a batter. Tyler Bassetti, Cole Santander, and Alejandro Lara, the two, three, four spots to hit. The first pitch is a slurve outside, one and out. It's been a really positive sign for Fleming. He hasn't walked anybody, and that's troubled some of the previous pitchers so far this summer for the Crawdads. Tyler Bassetti stands in. The 1-0 is flown to center. Ranging back now coming in is Schmidt, and he'll make the catch for the first out of the inning. You think Schmidt looks more comfortable in center field than he does over at third? I was thinking that last inning, and I think that it, it kind of translates to when he's in the batter's box too because he's not thinking constantly about what he has to do in the field the next inning. And I, I love guys that have versatility, but I think sometimes it, 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 it gets in their head. 
can be a hindrance sometimes to move all around the diamond. Cole Santander stands in, 0 for 1, grounded out to shortstop in his first at bat. The first pitch to him is a slider on the outside, 0 and 1. Three to nothing, the Crawdads lead. Top of the fourth inning. Ryan Fleming working from the windup and working quickly. His 0 1 is a beautiful slider. Pulled the string on Santander, and it's 0 2. I talked to Fleming before the game today, and you know he de he describes it as a as a slider as a slurve. And I said, "Why is that?" He just he said eh, it has a little top down break to it as well. The 0-2 goes back to the slurve ground ball hard, but just foul past the third base bag. But I, I said, uh, so so which is it, a slider, a curve, a slurve? He goes, it's it's all three. <laughs> It definitely looks like it. It's got good movement, good bite. It's an, it definitely has that mix of strong bite and also 12-6 movement. It can throw it not just to get a hitter to chase. He can throw it for a strike as well. And, and that's what makes that pitch so effective for him. It's not just a strikeout pitch. You got a guy go fishing. He, uh, he can drop it in there. The one, two, fastball up, and actually now it's one and two as pitch misses high. One ball, two strikes, and one out. Fleming, here's the one, two. There's that slurve again, and he gets Santander to pull the string one more time. Strike three swinging. That's the first strikeout of the day for Ryan Fleming. Fleming showing good stuff. I mean, thought it was a good start uh, yesterday from Caden Cassidy, and Fleming is doing a very nice job here for the dads this afternoon. The first pitch to Lara is a fastball that misses away, 1-0. And really, usually at this point, Coach Cummings has someone warming up in the bullpen. He likes to get his starters to go three or four, usually likes to get them through four. Has someone warming up in the fourth inning, but no one today. Fleming's working quick and he's working efficiently. 1-0 is down low, 2-0. Hopefully no broadcaster's jinx on that one. Are you a believer in the broadcaster's jinx? No. Terrible. I don't, I don't think any jinxes exist. Terrible. The 2-0, fastball on the outside, 2-1. Call diamond sports for a living? I don't. I don't, I don't believe in jinxes. Uh, luck is not a thing. Wow. Fleming's two one grounded to second base, on a hop, picked up and thrown on to first, and another very clean, quick inning for Ryan Fleming. One two three go. The Mudcats will head to the bottom of the fourth. Three to nothing. The score here on the Walnut Creek Crawdads streaming network. Back here for the bottom of the fourth inning, Jacob Craig, Ryan Ellis, and Matt King. The four, five, six spots, traditionally the power spots. Craig, 
However, hasn't shown that power today. He's 0 for 1. He popped out to shortstop. First pitch to him. He flares this one off to the right. Foul on one. I'll make a correction real quick. For the last about season and now 10 games, I've been calling Kenny DeSell, Kenny DeCelli. It's actually DeSell. I did not know that. I thought he was, you know, I thought it was an Italian name, and now I learn. The old one to Craig is popped foul, 0-2. We all make mistakes. I think it's hard when there's no pronunciation guides. I think we're both used to getting it's, handed pronunciation guides. That is true. That is very true. You see a lot of different names in the CCL, and you don't have the media guy that you do in college or even sometimes at the high school level. As the 0-2 is fouled off. There's still a couple of crawdads that I'm working to get right. I didn't get Jacob Craig until today. Yeah, his his is a tough one because it is it is not spelled Craig at all. It's K R I E G. Obviously, he is the nephew of David Craig. The O2 is way outside and low. One and two. We had a pitcher on Oregon softball this year. Her name was McKenna Clethermis. Thermos spelled K-L-I-E-T-H-E-R-M-E-S. And the whole season, as Stapleton's 1-2 is chopped to short, actually to third, backhanded and thrown on to first in time by the third baseman Jones for the first out of the inning. But the whole season with mechanically thermos, you kind of you kind of say it as, you say it quick, you say mechanically thermos, and my dad we, we came home for the Sanford trip, and my dad said, how's McKenna-Clee doing? We were like, what? And he was like, McKenna-Clee, the pitcher. I was like, McKenna-Clee Thermos. And the whole season, he thought it was McKenna-Clee Thermos. Uh, <laughs> so now, my broadcast partner, Ryan Milano, and I, we just call her McKenna-Clee, as the first pitch to Ellis is outside. Hey, it might stick. Well, she transferred, so. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> She's not saying either. Oh, no. No more chances to use that. So a really nice play earlier there by Jones. 1-0 misses. Or, excuse me, hits the zone. 1-1. One one. It's interesting. He had the error earlier in the first and then comes up with a beautiful backhand stab and just fires it over to first with some major velo. The 1-1 one one is down low. Yeah, in my, in my haste to talk about mechanically thermos, I... Missed a really nice play there on the field. No, uh, you didn't miss it. I mean, it was. It I don't was, think I gave it the credit that that was deserved. It was a good. It was a nice play for him bouncing back. Two and one to Ellis. Checks his swing and the pitch is. They call the strike. Two and two. I think the zone's been a little tough for Ellis. Obviously, under six foot and you know the knees to the letters there. The smaller zone. Two and two. The catcher setting outside as slider misses in. Did he go? Yes, he did. Appealed down to Kate Hart at third, and she pulled the trigger for the second out of the inning. Tried holding up there, did Ellis. But as I was mentioning, you know, a little bit of a smaller zone because he's a man of smaller stature. But I don't think the home plate umpires always call it that consistently it's it's very hard to constantly adjust your zone for height I mean, if you look at major league baseball you see guys like aaron judge or jose altuve first pitch to king is popped high in the air left side jones under it and he'll make the catch for the third out of the inning so the struggles continue at the plate for matt king no runs no hits no errors no men left on base we'll head to the top of the fifth here on the crowd ad streaming network
Back here for the top of the fifth inning, and this game is moving very quickly. It's only 4.58. This game started at 4.02. I mean, I feel like at this, at this point in the game yesterday, it was already probably about 6, 5, 5.45. Well, we're playing speed ball today, and you just wonder how many of these umpires maybe want to, well, maybe not just the umpires, but the, the players as well want to go home and watch this uh, Warrior-Boston Celtics game tonight. I, I want to watch that game. I would not be opposed to a to a two hour baseball game. Yeah, two hours, isn't that what uh, Rob Manfred's trying to get the MLB to be? Right? He is, and he is not doing a good job of that. Oh boy! No pitch clock needed here in the California Collegiate League. All these guys, they just grab the ball and they rip it. Ryan Fleming, he's been working quick. His fifth inning of work, facing. Jared Wood, five-spot hitter. The first pitch to Wood, fly ball. Back behind first base, Brome going out, and he will reach out, and the ball drops in foul territory. That was tough. The wind kind of took that a little bit, and he was running down the line and then quickly tried to kind of pivot and curve his run to the baseball as the wind kind of brushed it into foul territory. But a good effort there. You know, we really can see the speed of Brome, even when he's at first base. That Bermuda Triangle, as they call it out in, <laughs> out in right field. Own one, though. And this, I believe this is the longest a crawdad starter has gone this season. No starter. Yeah, no starter has gone longer than four. The 0-1 is a slurve that misses outside. And he's only on 36 pitches. I mean, we knew he'd been economi economical, but that's very fast. Slurve hits the strike zone. It's that's one and two. Just the beauty of a pitch there, Austin. He can just start it in, and then it works its way back out for a strike to a right-handed batter. It's got really good stuff. Here comes the one, two. It's a fastball that misses away. It's not necessarily dominant strikeout stuff like we see with Gabe Tanner or Caden Cassidy, but... This is even better for, for a defense. It keeps them on their toes. As the 2-2, two -two, there's that slurve again. And ooh, 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 ooh. thought he'd front door him there. That pitch looked just about perfect. That was a beauty of a pitch there. And luckily for Wood, he's not rung up on it. And he'll get to see another pitch. The payoff pitch. A 3-2. Same spot. This one's called strike three. A slurve on the inner half, and Wood goes down looking. The second strikeout of the day for Ryan Fleming. You're just not going to get away not swinging the bat twice in a row on that pitch. I mean, even though the, the last one was called a ball, the first one before that in that sequence was a ball, you're not going to get away with that twice. That was two straight pitches that were just about perfect from Ryan Fleming. He is dealing. The first pitch, there's that slurve again. It's chopped foul. Off to the third base side, 0-1. Really, if he keeps working this efficiently, I don't know if, I don't know when the next time we're going to see another pitcher is there's still no one up throwing yet in the Crawdads bullpen. There's a couple of guys over stretching. Is, is that Devin Susky walking out to the bullpen? Susky did pitch yesterday. Yeah, there's a pitcher out getting uh, stretching behind the mound. I think Susky's there to watch him, protect him from any foul balls. I don't think he's stretching. I think he's taking a nap. <laughs> the 0 1 from Fleming. Fastball. About a 55 footer. Bounces in front of the plate. 1 and 1. Oh, Fleming has been on it today. And, you know, with the pitch count so low, and with his effectiveness, might as well keep him out there. The 1-1. One, one. There's that slurve again, and this one's lashed through the left side and in for a base hit. Up with it is Cummings, and he'll throw it in, but topping on with a single. Second time he's reached today. The first time was on a fielder's choice, so officially one for two on the day. Slurve just hang up a little bit. Uh, and it's and the first time we've seen uh, Solano be able to connect on that pitch, and that one just kind of hung there a little bit. It wasn't a horrible pitch. But uh, that was the first time that it's really been attacked. And really, the, the other two hits in this game, it was 
Lara in the second inning, and he, he just stuck his bat out and hit the slurve up the middle as the first pitch is down with a fastball, 1-0. and And then Garcia in the third. I mean, that one was a, a flare to left field. Neither of them hit very hard. That was their best contact so far on the on that pass single there. 1-0 to Lamley, who tapped back to the mound on a check swing his last time, and he swings and fouls this one off to the left. 1-1. One and one. Three to nothing, the Crawdads are leading here in the top of the fifth inning. One and one, the count with one out. The runner on first is topping, he reached on a single. Coming set is Fleming, the one one. Fastball, lined out, deep center, Schmidt under it. Now he comes in on the ball and he makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So now two straight hard hit balls, but not much to worry about. An Adam ball there for Lamley. Yeah, I mean, right at Coleman, who did take a few steps back, just like he did on the uh, the last time pitch was lined out to him over there, but then quickly two or three steps forward and gets the glove on it. And it was an adventure at third yesterday. Not so much today out in center for Coleman Schmidt. Yeah, he's looking comfortable out there. Noah Garcia one for one on the day, though he was erased on a double play ball. First pitch misses high with a fastball. And really kind of rare to see a guy like Fleming who it seems like it's about 50-50 fastball slurve split with him. The 1-0 is fouled off with the runner from first topping faking running. You don't often see that much off-speed stuff thrown from a starter. Guy doing it with the Giants right now, Jacob Junis. Junis. He's been very effective, though he was just placed on the IL. I think the deal is, is you got to be able to locate those pitches for strikes, and that's what a lot of guys have trouble with. Fleming's 1-1, one, one, misses low, 2-1. It's also interesting to see Solano constantly kind of play around with sending the runner from first, and it's it's Trey Topping, and it's you know, he's the catcher today. Not even a very big lead as the 2-1 is chopped high to Brome at first. He'll pick it up somewhat like a pop-up, but he'll bring it to the back for the third out of the inning. And another very clean frame from Ryan Fleming. He works around a one-out single, but that'll do it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on base. 3 to nothing. the Dads lead when we come back here on the Walnut Creek Crawdads Streaming Network. Seven, eight, nine spot. Joey Donnelly, Zach Tejero, Casey Cummings do up. Joey Donnelly, not your traditional seven hitter. He's having a really, really solid start to his summer. He had a home run off the scoreboard yesterday. In right field today, catches. He plays first. He plays left. He plays right. I'm sure, there's not much he can't do on a baseball field. I'm sure, that was appealing in his college recruitment process. As the first pitch to him is flared and out to left. Ranging back, Bassetti, and he'll call off the left fielder to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Joey Donnelly, of course, playing for Cal, the Bears. Didn't 
appear this season, but he's a good player. I've been impressed by him this season. Donnelly has shown a good bat, but I think more importantly, it's going to be finding him a spot this summer defensively where he is comfortable and where he's supposed to play. Yesterday he was in left. We've seen him catch already. Today he's in right. Zach Tejero, the catcher today, takes a strike 0-1. Oh Tejero 0-1 oh on the day. He struck out in his first at bat. Donnelly is listed as an infielder. One oh, excuse me, the 01 misses inside, 1-1. One and, one. and really, there's only three catchers listed on the roster, but there's a bunch of guys that can catch. Joey Donnelly, Brian Duroff catches, or is listed as a catcher. 1-1 one, one, misses way down low, 2-1. And, and really, I'm sure if you asked Coleman Schmidt to catch, he would, he would put on the gear. Brian Duroff, actually, his college coaches do want him to catch, so I'm sure we'll see him. Behind the plate this summer at some point. The 2-1 to Tejero. Fastball hits the outside. 2-2. Two and two. Tejero, you mentioned this a little bit. Last summer he played with the Crawdads. He only played in 16 games at 255. Not bad. 6 RBI. It's just been a lot better so far this summer. The 2-2. Two, two. Fisted. First base side. Up with it, the first baseman, he'll underhand shove the first with the pitcher Stapleton covering for the second out of the inning. But I agree, even even with an 0 for 2 day today, he, he looks really solid at the plate. I think, really, I think he has a, he, he has a claim to be the best the defensive catcher on this team. He works hard back there. He's never going to take a pitch off. No, and, and he's made a huge improvement over the year. This last 365 days in that department. First pitch to Casey Cummings is a fastball that misses away. 1-0. I was listening to Giants broadcasters yesterday, Kruk and Kipe, talking about Mike Matheny, former Giants catcher, current Royals manager, and he would never take a pitch off either. And I mean, it's, just, it's kind of what Zach Tejero reminds me of. 1-0, hits the zone for a strike, 1-1. One one. Zach Tejero is the kind of player you want on your team. Oh, he's tough. He's durable. He's a workhorse, and he can play every day. 1-1 one, one to Cummings. It's fouled off to the left, 1-2. and two. The dangerous bat of Coleman Schmidt waiting on deck. That's exactly what I was looking at, partner. I was looking right down there on the on-deck circle, and sure Stapleton does not want to see him. 1-2 is up. And inside, two and two. Yeah, if I'm Stapleton, I mean, I, I really want to get through Casey Cummings. And with no one up in the bullpen for the Mudcats, that's the matchup that we're waiting for. The 2-2 two -two is swung on and missed, so we'll have to wait at least another frame to see that Cummings-Stapleton matchup. The Crawdads go down without a threat. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left on base. We'll head to the top of the sixth inning here on the Walnut Creek Crawdads streaming network. Top of the sixth inning, Ryan Fleming still out on the mound. So the previous high in innings pitch was four. It was a smorgasbord of players that had thrown those four innings, but Ryan Fleming cruising through five. He's sitting at just 51 pitches. That's uber efficient. Last Thursday, he did make the start against Sonoma. Threw three and a third innings, but, uh, yeah, today it's just been lights-out stuff. 
whether it's been the fastball or the slurve or the few times that he's dropped the changeup, he hasn't even really had to go to that. He's just been dominant on the mound. I mean, he's pitching like an ace today. This is this is a guy that that looks like a true Division One caliber starting pitcher. Very comfortable out there. First pitch he'll throw in the sixth inning. We'll come to the third baseman, Jaden Jones, and it's a fastball that misses a touch outside, 1-0. Oh. Want to know the count to Jaden Jones. Swing, fly ball right field. Donnelly ranging over to his left, and he will reach out and make the catch. Two pitches. That's the first out of the inning for Ryan Fleming. F9 in the scorebook, and lineup card will flip over to Kenny DeSell, who finally on this side of the broadcast is getting his name pronounced right. Yeah, there you go, Kenny. Sorry I messed it up for the last year, almost year and a half. Uh, not that he's listening, but <laughs> sure he'd rather be out there playing baseball than listening to us talk about him. Probably. Fleming working from the windup. His first pitch two to sell. Hit hard to short. King ranges over on a slide. Will throw to first. Has to hurry, but he makes the play. Six to three. A really nice play by Matt King at shortstop for the second out of the inning. I mean, another one pitch, one out for, for Ryan Fleming. He's just getting the job done. Well, that's the second time that DeSalle's been retired 6-3, but that one, a much harder hit ball, and just smothering it out there at short was king. It was a, it was a great play to block that ball and then get on it with the throwing arm and send a real nice four-seamer over to first base. Bring up the big power bat of Tyler Bassetti, the shortstop. He takes the first pitch, a slurve for a strike. Continues to locate that slurve beautifully. Fleming may have gotten a call there, but he's been pounding the zone, so you're going to get those calls. Absolutely. The 0-1 is a slurve that's swung on and missed in the same spot, and the count is 0-2. And now Bassetti has to protect that part of the plate, which maybe he didn't want to going into the at-bat. I mean, if I'm Fleming here, I'm... I don't know if I'm going to that same pitch. I might look to go with a fastball inside, but Tejero sets on the outside. He goes back to that pitch. Strike three swinging. Ryan Fleming, have yourself a day. Six shutout frames, and the Crawdads will go to the bottom of the sixth, leading three to nothing here on the Walnut Creek Crawdads streaming network. Back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. Dylan McShane now on the mound for the Mudcats. And, I mean, this is a guy I'm really excited to watch. This is a future duck. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get to see hopefully a lot of him while you're up there at Oregon, Austin. 
I didn't get to watch much of the Oregon baseball team because I was with softball for most of the season. There was a lot of overlap, but I followed that team pretty religiously. I'll face the top of the lineup and maybe the hottest hitter on this team right now. Uh, not even maybe. As the first pitch to Coleman Schmidt misses down and away. One and oh. Schmidt two for two with a couple of home runs on the day and both of them to the exact same spot right over the batter's eye in center. Kenny DeSell, a great defender, but there's nothing you can do when the ball's over the fence. The 1-0 -oh to Schmidt, he takes on the inside half, one and one. And I don't know how clear it is with the camera, but Dylan McShane is six foot nine on the mound. A long, lanky human being. His 1-1. It's chopped back up the middle. McShane tries to barehand it, but it'll go to the second baseman who will throw on to first. Jared Wood feeds over to Noah Garcia for the first out of the inning. And at long last, Coleman Schmidt is retired. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, McShane's very happy about that on the mound. Also, McShane, it was interesting, tried to barehand that ball. It was hit pretty hard, a little skipper on the infield grass, uh, eventually reached the dirt, but uh, I think better for McShane that he didn't touch that ball with the throwing hand. And that would have been a singer. I'd bring up Brian Duroff, 0 for 2 on the day. Lined out to right field his last time up. First pitch popped up way up high. Infielders coming in, it's Jones from third base and he drops the ball. <laughs> the ball's going to stop right on the chalk. Fair. Jared Jones crashing hard on that baseball. I think it's going to go down as a hit. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, that was a big pop-up. See how the score does. It did not touch his glove, but... I mean, not sure where that one's going to go, but... I I'm going to say error. I'm it's the second time that Duroff has reached on an E5 today. Yeah, I am also saying error. E5. I'd love to give Duroff the hit, but. First pitch to Brome misses outside, 1 0. Brome, 1 for 2 on the day. He doubled it home a run in his first at bat and then struck out swinging his second time up. Left handed batter's box swinging a red bat today. The 1 0. Fly ball left field will drift foul. Count becomes even at one. Three to nothing. The crowd adds lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. No runs on three hits and two errors, both on Jared Jones, the third baseman. That's for Solano. Three runs on three hits and no errors for the crowd adds. Nice to see errorless baseball. The 1-1 one -one is a slider that misses just away. Does have a nice slider, though, does uh, McShane. That looked really good. Tried to come outside and bring it back in. Yeah, that one had some nice nice bite on it. Missed a little outside. Two and one. McShane checks the runner. Fastball swung through. Heavy fastball from Dylan McShane. Two balls, two strikes, one out. McShane checks back. His 2-2 two -two misses way tight. So I think it's it's pretty clear what 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 the scouting report is on Dylan McShane is he's got great stuff, but he needs to get better control of his huge body. A hard fastball that he can elevate if he needs to, and a slider that'll just dive bomb you. Three and two, the payoff to Brome. Fastball chopped to second base. Up with it, the second baseman. He'll toss to second for one. The return throw to first is not in time. Bassetti put some good juice on the throw back to first, but the speed of Brome caused that to just be a fielder's choice. I think Wood over there at second had to kind of wait for that ball to get to him. It was chopped awfully high, and Brome able to leg that one out. We'll bring up Jacob Craig trying to get out of this cold spell he's in. 0 for his last 13 now. 0 for 2, of course, on the day. Grounded out to third his last time up. A really nice play from Jones. First pitch he sees the strike. and I mean, this is a matchup that could be in Oregon for, for the next couple of years. I'd like to see Craig, 
you know, go go after maybe the first pitch. I mean, it's not been going well past few games. The 0-1 way outside. Might as well go with the ambush tactics maybe and just try to jump on one. That's what he tried to do. Is, or he went off to, after the second pitch, his last bat. Excuse me. I, I want to see him maybe go the other way with it, just shorten up, not try to do too much. 1-1 one, one here. McShane fires a fastball on the inside. It's 1-2. and two. It's A good pitch there from McShane and Craig really crowding the plate. I know he had to move the hands out of the way, but that was a strike 100%. Craig, very wide open stance. The 1-2 misses outside. And I think with, with how wide open it is, I mean, I'm, I'm no scout, but I think that it kind of cuts off the... The, the, the outside part of the plate causes him to roll over a lot. But I mean there's there's a reason I'm up here not 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 coaching this this team. Deuce is wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Craig takes way outside with an off speed pitch and it's three and two. I mean it's clear that Coach Cummings is still putting a lot of faith in Jacob Craig. He's still in the fourth spot. Though I know you did help with the lineup today. Sure, that was fun. That does not need to be mentioned. <laughs> the full count pitch, and Craig hits this one out hard to left, but under it is Lamley, and he'll make the catch for the third out of the inning. So the crowd adds get a runner on base, but he's stranded there on the error by Jones. We'll head to the top of the seventh, and back out to the mound is Ryan Fleming. Top of the seventh inning, Ryan Fleming still on the mound. I mean, why would you take him out? He's at 56 pitches. Yeah, we'll see how long he can go. Only 56 pitches, as you just mentioned, Austin. Been very, very efficient. And it'll be 3, 4, and 5 for Solano. Santander, then Lara, and then Jared Wood. Santander 0 for 2 today. Struck out in the fourth as he pops this up high. And the third baseman, Craig, going to have it for out number one. I mean, you mentioned wanting to see Jacob Craig swing at the first pitch. Why are these guys still swinging at the first pitch out here? I, you know, they're doing Fleming a big favor because really the only ball that they've been able to uh, connect hard on was a hanger. And, uh, you know, it just ended up being a single. It wasn't that much damage. So here's Alejandro Lara who takes strike one. Lara did single in the second. That was the one where he just poked it right back up the middle. The 0 one pitch. This misses high and in, and the count even at a ball and a strike. Crawdads lead 3-0 against Solano. Solano right up there in second place in the CCL North. The 1-1, one, one. there's that slurve, and that crosses home plate for strike number two. But yeah, it's been a really good day for Fleming on the mound so far. Stapleton, his counterpart from Solano, not able to go as deep. 
Slurve here, check swung on, and he'll break the plane. And Tejero having a tough time finding it in the dirt. Finally throws over to first, and I believe it hits the back foot of the batsman, Lara. And let's see, there's going to be a conference here between Harvey Maxey and Ron McGath, and they're going to call the runner out, so Lara is out. It's a big break for the Crawdads. It's a big break for the Crawdads and a terrible one for Lara. And Lara is indeed out. He's not too happy about it. Neither is Ryan Adams, the manager for Solano. And I think Ryan Adams is trying to say, look, he ran straight down the baseline there, and Tejero didn't make an effort to maybe scoot away and make a, make a throw that wouldn't hit Lara, but I think it's a moot point here. Harvey Maxey's not going to change his decision. Absolutely not. Not, not in this situation. And, well, now actually we're going to have a conference between Harvey Maxey, Ron McGath, the first base umpire, and Kate Hart. Uh, so they're going to discuss this. I uh, did see one call be overturned last summer, I remember. That was up in Healdsburg. Is, it was a ball that was hit. Forget who it was for the Crawdads, but the Healdsburg right fielder, I believe it was Braden Runyon came on to make the catch. And they will stay with the out call. So nothing changing there. But uh, it was ruled a hit, and then Joey Gomes came out and argued, and they overturned it and said it wasn't a trap ball, but indeed a catch out in right field. That's the only time in the CCL that I've seen a call get overturned. But as it stands now, Laura is out. It's the Joey Gomes effect for you. And it, you know, it's got that persuasion. The big name and probably is very persuasive. So here is Jared Wood. Wood 0 for 2. Popped up on the infield in his first at bat. First pitch here to Wood. Misses away with the slurve does Fleming. Wood also struck out looking in the fifth. A good day so far for the dads. Here's this pitch. Misses low with the fastball does Fleming and the count 2-0. And the 2-0 pitch. That's a fastball on the outside corner for strike number one. Taking all the way was Wood. Elsewhere around the CCL, Lincoln is going to be in Healdsburg tonight at 6 p.m. This pitch in there for strike number two on the inner half to the right-handed batting Wood. And the West Coast Kings are visiting Sonoma up at Arnold Field at 6.05 p.m. Just the three games on the slate today in the CCL. The 2-2, as this is chopped over to third. Craig has it, fires on to first in time for out number three. Very quick top half of the seventh. No hits, no runs for Solano, and the Crawdads still lead 3-0. Bottom of the seventh when we come back here on the Crawdad Streaming Network. Back here at Monta Vista in Danville, California. Crawdads leading three to nothing. Still just three hits today. 
for both teams, but three runs for the Dads, two errors for the visiting Solano Mudcats. Still a little bit of an argument going on about that Lara play where Tejero's throw over to first hit him after Lara swung at the third pitch in the dirt. It'll be Ryan Ellis, then Matt King and Joey Donnelly. So a lefty for McShane to deal with, who is out there for his second inning of work in relief of Andrew Stapleton. First pitch here from McShane is a good fastball outside for a strike. In the outside corner, Stapleton was able to toss five innings, gave up three hits, three runs, two of them earned. Didn't walk anybody and struck out four as this pitch is hit into the 5-6 hole and it gets by a diving Jones. That'll be a single leading off for Ryan Ellis. Well, that's definitely what Ryan Ellis needed, getting out of a little slump with a seeing eye single. He's one for three now, and a lot better results than the strikeout he had in the fourth. And here's Matt King, who will look to do the same, put the ball in play and have it land somewhere where a Solano defender is not. I mean, he's been so good defensively that it's, it's a little bit of give and take. I think, I think that Coach Cummings is, is happy with that trade-off. First pitch here to King as he chops his foul over near the dugout of the Mudcats. The Crawdads, of course, will be on the road tomorrow up in Healdsburg. That game at 6 p.m. at Recreation Park. And then Saturday back here at Monta Vista against the West Coast Kings. And then up in Lincoln next Tuesday. Long stretch of off days. Yeah, a few off days. Yo, one pitch. This is... Top foul again down the third base line. Assume that Sunday off day is for Father's Day. Yes, that's, that's a good point. The Sunday off day and then the Monday off day, which is regularly scheduled around the CCL. Oh, well, last year I do believe the Crawdads did play on Father's Day. Yeah, I mean, there's just about nothing I'd rather do for, for Father's Day than, than be with my dad watching a baseball game. It's always fun, especially if you can go to the ballpark and be there. So Alice does a little dance off of first, the 0-2, and there's a slider that starts in and tries to curl back over the plate, and it's called a ball. It's a really good spot. It's a great spot, and Matt King... Cannot take on that pitch again. It will probably be called a strike if it's located the same way. Here's McShane, and King connects, and it's off the leaping Jones's glove, and that'll be a single. So a hit there for King. Back-to-back -back singles for the Crawdads. A nice athletic play there by Jones. Just ricochets off the top of the leather and there's two runners on with nobody out two straight hits from, from guys who really need hits and really even jacob craig in the last inning i mean a ball was hit pretty hard to left field and he hasn't really been hitting the ball hard recently so three guys that really needed good at bats have been having good at bats uh, mcshane gonna have to Get through a little bit of a jam here in the bottom of the seventh as the Crawdad right fielder this afternoon, Joey Donnelly, steps in. So the lefty Ellis single, then Matt King with a hit. And here's the left-handed bat of Joey Donnelly. Donnelly went yard yesterday. Oh, the Crawdads only scored two runs. Ellis really playing some games out there on second as this pitch in there, a fastball for strike number one. A lot of dancing off the bag from Ryan Ellis. I mean, yeah, and a lot of times with these taller pitchers, they have a harder time getting in to the, to the plate. They have a harder time with their motion and being able to work all those moving parts quickly. McShane looks back at second and fires, and this is tapped foul. Especially with a guy like Ellis, who has speed, and McShane, who's really not giving him that much attention over there. He's definitely trying to get the attention of McShane, but it's not obliging. 0-2 coming. 
on deck, Zach Tejero. As Donnelly is ready, so is McShane, who sets. And the pitch, and the runners both go, and this pitch is fouled back into the fencing behind home plate, and the count will stay 0-2. Crawdads with a 3-0 lead. Already surpassing their run total yesterday. Only had two runs yesterday. 0-2 to Donnelly, and he takes a fastball that misses below the knees, right around the socks. And a ball and two strikes with nobody out. Ellis in scoring position over at second. King on first. Two runs yesterday, three runs today. Looking for more with Donnelly. In a one-two count, he sees a slider here that misses outside. McShane's hitting the spots. He's just not getting the calls. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way to Donnelly. And here it is. Both runners go. The pitch misses outside. It'll be 3-2, and two and both runners advance the station. So runners at third and second now. A double steal employed by the Crawdads. And the count is full. So no throw there from Trey Topping. As Ellis now at third. And the pitch. Just fighting it off was Donnelly. See if Fleming comes out for the top of the eighth. A little bit of stirring over there in the Crawdad bullpen, but no one really throwing. And the 3-2. Donnelly takes this out to left field. It'll hang up for the left fielder, Lamley, but that'll score Ellis from third. It is now 4 to nothing here. And the Crawdads firmly in control. Up by four in the bottom of the seventh. Well, that'll bring on Zach Tejero. Donnelly 0 for 3, but does have the RBI. Tejero 0 for 2. Struck out in the second. Tejero showing bunt, and this fastball runs inside as he tries to pull it back. Had to kind of dive out of the way there. Back to Ryan Fleming. I don't think we should be surprised that he's he's dominating today. This is his home field. Pitched four years of high school ball here. Did play in Monta Vista. Fleming very comfortable today. And here comes the 1 0 to Tejero. And this fastball misses inside as well, about belt high, and the count 2 0. King over at second. Shane has now surrendered a run. The 2-0 to Harrow takes. His fastball misses a little bit high in the count. 3-0. Zach Tejero, another guy that's struggled a little bit recently. He would take a walk in this situation. Don't think he'll have the green light on 3-0. See if McShane just tries to blow a fastball by him. The 3-0 pitch from McShane and... The light was on. Tejero had one to hit, and foul tipped it into Topping's glove. You know, with the way the wind's been today, it makes Coleman Schmidt's two home runs very impressive. It's blowing right in from center as this pitch is swung on and missed, and the count runs full, three and two. So a couple of good pitches to get to a full count from McShane after... Falling behind 3-0. and oh. And Tejero just wants to put the ball in play. At the very least, advance the runner. King from second. 
And the 3-2, King goes, and this is a fastball that hits Tejero right on the kneecap. Boy. And the 1-2 pitch coming to Schmidt, and he fights us off. Foul once again. And the count will stay 1-2. and two. two away here, two runners on. Tejero over at first. He was hit by a pitch. King just off of second. And Schmidt in a 1-2 hole here against McShane, who's still on the mound for Solano. One run across already for the Dads this half inning. 1-2 pitch, misses away, and the count even at two balls and two strikes. Really, this is the longest inning that we've had so far in this game. I wonder if this is detrimental to Ryan Fleming as he doesn't have that same rhythm that he's gotten into so far this game. It'll be interesting to see if he comes back out for the eighth frame. Has been a little bit of a rest now. This inning has gone a little long, this half inning, relative to the others. 2-2 pitch here from McShane, and he gets Schmidt swinging, and it's going to be called a foul tip into the dirt. Really, I mean, this inning hasn't been that long. It just feels like, compared to the rest of the innings, which have gone pretty much 1-2-3 the entire game, this feels like an eternity. Hasn't been. And it hasn't been. It's just, yeah, the, the rest it's of the game has inning. had such a frantic and furious pace to it. Stapleton was pitching very quickly. Fleming has all day. And now McShane getting a little bogged down out there on the mound for Solano. 2-2 two -two once again. Here it is, a slider that hits the inner half of the plate for strike number three. Gets Schmidt looking. But the Crawdads do score one. Able to get an RBI off a sacrifice fly from Joey Donnelly. They do leave two on. They do record two hits. And it is now 4 nothing. Crawdads, top of the eighth when we come back here on the Crawdads Streaming Network. All right, well. Top of the eighth inning here in Danville, California. The Crawdads leading four to nothing. Ryan Fleming has been lifted after a very good start. He was able to go seven innings. Gave up three hits. Obviously the no runs and recorded four strikeouts, no walks on 66 pitches. And Austin Oda, you pointed out during the break that he was only in one three ball count My all step, day yeah. and still did not give up a walk. And he fell behind a few times, 2-0, and, oh, and and really was just able to, you know, put the ball wherever he wanted uh, the, the baseball to go and threw a lot of strikes. Yeah, I mean, this is easily the best start of the Crawdads season so far. I don't, I mean, you were here last season, obviously. I'm not sure how compare, how that compares to, to last year, but. One of the best starts I mean, yeah. I've seen, uh, from especially from a pitch uh, economy uh, side of things he did a very good job of keeping the pitch count low and recording outs I mean there were a few times where pitchers last year like 
Garza, for instance, had a game where he struck out nine. Oh, Tommy Scavone as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was a great performance for Fleming. And the new pitcher is Seth Higdon. It'll be topping Lamley and Garcia, the first pitch to topping, and it hits off the bottom of the bat right off the knob. And that'll be a strike, the count 0 oh and 1. Really, if you are if, if you want to replace Ryan Fleming, this isn't a bad guy to replace him with. Seth Higdon has been tremendous this summer, even in two outings. I mean, he's been lights out. He's been very good. This is his third appearance. Still hasn't given up an earned run, and there's the big curveball from Higdon that misses high in the count even 1-1. One one. Higdon's last appearance was on June 12th against the Packers. That was that Sunday game that... Crawdads dropped 11-1, to but he did throw an inning, struck out two, face three, didn't give up any hits. This pitch in there for a strike in the count one and two. Seth Higdon out of noted baseball powerhouse Incarnate Word. And Incarnate Word down in uh, Texas. But, I mean, the two Incarnate Word kids on this team have been really good this summer. The one-two, there's that big over-the-top delivery from Higdon as this is skied, and the second baseman Ellis has it for the first out. Big pop-up just on the outfield grass. Ellis didn't have to move all that far. There's one away with the Crawdads leading 4 to nothing here in the top of the eighth inning. A tray now one for three. And here is Caleb Lamley. Caleb, who's 0 for 2. Back in the fifth, he lined out to center. And the pitch from Higdon to the righty Lamley, and he fouls this over to the dugout of the Crawdads. It'll be collected there by, I believe that was Kavara's Tears, who's getting the day off today. Usually Tears and right since he's been here, and this afternoon it's been Donnelly. And here's the 0-1. This pitch misses high and in, and the count even at 1-1. One one. You know, I mentioned that only one three-ball count from Fleming today, but 10 of the 21 outs he recorded by way of the ground ball. That's really impressive. That's, I mean, that's going to get you outs every time. And induced a lot of soft contact for sure, and there's a nice curveball in the inner half for strike number two. The count, a ball and two strikes with one away. Crawdads at four and four this afternoon, looking to... Improve that to five and four and get back to five hundred in league play at three and three. The one two pitch from Higdon, and this is a mile high on the infield. Who's gonna take it? It's gonna be Matt King, the shortstop, who puts the glove on it for out number two. Twenty one outs, ten of them pop or twenty of them ten of them ground outs, four of them strikeouts, a couple pop outs, and then the rest of them were flyouts. I mean pop ups and ground balls. I mean a, a pitcher's best friend doesn't have to throw a whole lot of pitches or worry about getting deep into counts. It's been very good for the Crawdads pitching staff today and it's taken some of the stress off a of defense that has made some errors earlier this summer as this ball is hit over to second baseman Ryan Ellis who throws on to first for out number three to retire Noah Garcia. So a very quick one, two, three inning for the Dads there on the mound. And uh, defensively, they've looked good. The pitching has been good. And I mean, only three hits allowed so far, Austin. I mean, it's it's a different Crawdads team today. It's This is not the team that gave up 16 to run, 16 runs to Healdsburg yesterday. This is not the team that made five errors yesterday. This is a fundamentally sound, good baseball team. Uh, playing much better today. and. Looking to take uh, a second game during this three-game homestand. Currently, the Crawdads lead 4-0 heading into the bottom of the eighth. We'll be right back with more Crawdads baseball when we return here on the Crawdads Streaming Network.
Bottom of the eighth inning, Crawdads up to bat. They lead four to nothing. There is a new pitcher out there on the mound for Solano. It is Colin Medeiros. This will be Colin's third appearance this summer. He has a 5.06 ERA and five and a third innings pitched. And the first pitch to Brian DeRoff here in the bottom of the eighth. Ends up low and outside for ball one. It's two, three, and four for the Crawdads. DeRoff, then Ryan Brohm, and Jacob Craig, uh, Craig rather, the cleanup hitter. As DeRoff hits this on the ground over to Bassetti, who throws on to first and plenty of time for out number one. A quick first out there for the new pitcher, Colin Medeiros, who last pitched on June 10th against the Lincoln Potters in a 6-4 loss for the Mudcats. And here's Ryan Brome, who is one for three so far. Does have an RBI double. Been caught stealing ones. First pitch to Brome with one away. Here's a fastball that is framed wonderfully by the catcher, Trey Toppings. For strike number one, kind of left it out there a little, a little longer than usual for Harvey Maxey to make that strike call. And the 0-1 pitch, this misses in. And the count even at one and one. I think Harvey Maxey wants to get home and watch the Warriors game. Uh, he might, might be thinking about We're that. Hit in the 6 o'clock hour. It's getting pretty windy out here as well. 1-1. One, one. That's in there for... Strike number two, a good fastball there. Omadero's working quickly. That has been the theme today for all the pitchers. I Mc like it. Yeah, McShane really the only one who's been bogged down. The one-two. This is punched foul. Count will stay one and two. Crawdads will be back at it tomorrow on the road in Healdsburg. Have that game for you right around 6 o'clock. 6.05 is probably when first pitch will happen. The one-two pitch. Here's a fastball that misses outside to Rome. First night game in a while for the Crawdads tomorrow. Sad I'm not going to be there. 2-2 two -two pitch. This one is chopped, and the pitcher... Medeiros will field it and throw on to first and just get Brome for out number two. Had to wait for that ball to come back down and took a couple of bounces, picked it up, and immediately fired over to first. And Brome is retired. It's a really nice play from Paul Medeiros. It's not a not a play you expect your pitcher to be able to make, but he made it, especially I mean, from the right side. That's it's a tough transfer. Well, here's Jacob Craig. 0 for 3. First pitch to Craig, and he takes one right down the middle for strike number one. Craig could plant one here. That would be nice. Not only from an insurance standpoint, but for his own numbers. This pitch dropped by toppings behind the dish, and it's 1 and 1. Got that. That's strike 1. Uh, strike 2, excuse me. And this pitch taken out to left field, but it'll drift foul. So two strikes on the board now. Yeah, if he catches that, that's that's a strike. I mean, it does happen. Sometimes you don't catch the ball, and it doesn't really matter where it is, but if it's out there on the black, you're not going to get the call. So it's 1-2 to Jacob Craig with two away. In the bottom of the eighth. The pitch. Craig hits this. Couple of bounces over to short. Bassetti has it. Makes nice the throw play. to first. And a very nice play by Bassetti. And that is a one, two, three, bottom of the eighth for Medeiros out of the pen. Top of the ninth coming up. The Crawdads not able to get any hits. Obviously no runs. They still lead, though, four to nothing. Top of the ninth coming up when we return. And... Hopefully the Crawdads can close this one out and get a victory here today in Danville, California before hitting the road tomorrow in Healdsburg. We'll be right back with the top of the ninth here on the Crawdads Streaming Network.
No one tunes into point. Top of the ninth inning. Still Seth Higdon on the mound, his second inning of work. Everything stays the way it is now with the Crawdads leading 4 nothing. And if they eventually win today's contest, it'll be Ryan Fleming in line for the win. Andrew Stapleton will get the loss. Not a save situation for Higdon. He's still going to have to wait to get his first save of the summer. And the first pitch here misses low in the count 1-0. and oh. It's nice to see this bullpen kind of taking shape. I think you can, at this point, I mean, in, in my eyes, I think Adriz is on. He's the, he's the closer. Higdon's a really nice setup piece, though. Pitch here. That's in there. For a strike as Jones takes. And the count even, 1-1. One and one. It's Jones, then DeSell and Bassetti, 9-1 and 2. The last three chances for Solano, who trailed by four. This fastball misses up high in the count, two balls and a strike. Some really good pieces in this in this Crawdads bullpen. I think Colson Abel has some of the best stuff on this team. The rotations piecing itself together. This pitch is hit right back at the pitcher, Higdon, who's finally able to locate the ball right there on the mound and throw over to first for out number one. So here comes... Kenny DeSell, 0 for 3. He's grounded out 6-3 a few times. Was able to lift the ball in the air once, but it was a fly out to left. He's hit the ball pretty well all three times, especially the last play. It took a really nice play from Matt King at shortstop to slide over to his left and make a play on that one. First pitch to DeSell. And that misses. Count 1 and 0. Oh. One thing I've noticed about this field here at Monta Vista is the players are going to get dirty no matter what. There's just dust cloud after dust cloud every play. This field just eats water up. It doesn't seem to matter how much water you actually give it. As this pitch is hit on a rope out to center, and DeSalle is now one for four. Another hard hit ball for Kenny. Hit one hard, like you mentioned, Austin, straight at Matt King. This time he's able to find the gap. He's a good player. Right behind the second base bag, and with one away, DeSell is on first. Definitely knows what he's doing out there, both in center field and in the batter's box. Oh, here's Bassetti. He's 0 for 3, struck out in his last at bat in the sixth. And he takes a first pitch strike there from Higdon. As it stands now, the Crawdads are a game and a half out of first place in the CCL North. Be able to pick up some ground here. They advance to three and three with a win, and the runner goes. Let's see if Tejero is able to throw him out, and DeSell is safe head first into second. It's an accurate throw from Tejero just wasn't able to put enough juice on the ball there to get the speedy to sell. That seemed to kind of die in midair almost. It looks like out of the hand, it, Tejero was going to have the advantage there. And then that went across the pitcher's mound. It looked to have stopped in midair almost. Well, the count one and one. That is the sixth stolen base for Kenny to sell this summer. Oh, he's already gotten himself into scoring position. Does Coleman Schmidt lead the league in steals and home runs at this point? Home runs he does. Steals, I'd have to have to check on that. The 1-1 pitch. This is hit fair and a diving stab made by Craig. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how he got that ball. I don't know how he did either. Unfortunately, the Crawdads. Going to have to deal with some more runners on the base paths here, but a beautiful play there by Craig. I'm not sure how he got that. I mean, that ball looked like it hit maybe off the lip of the grass. It cut out there and it took a wild hop, and he was already on the ground and stuck his glove up to catch the wild hop. What a play, but just, I mean, unable to get up and throw in time. You can't really blame him. No, you, you can't. I mean, he tried. 
That is tough. Here is Cole Santander. First pitch to Santander, and Higdon goes off speed on him. He swings out in front of it, and the count 0 and 1, but two runners on, one in scoring position to sell over at second, Bassetti at first. Cole Santander has not looked very comfortable in that batter's box so far today. 0 for 3, you struck out already. And time is called. Back-to-back -back hits, obviously, for Solano. It's chilly out here. It is starting to get Weird a little weather. cold. It was 72 at the start of the game. It's dipped below 70, I believe, now. The 0-1. And that's swung on and miss, and the count 0 and 2. According to the thermometer, it is 68 out here now, but with the wind coming in from center, it feels a little colder than that. Overall, though, pretty good day for baseball, as long as you have a sweater with you. As the grandstands are just about covered in shade now. And the 0-2 to Santander. Swung on and missed in the dirt. And that is the second time that Santander goes down on strikes. Not a great day for the three-spot hitter. A two away here in the top of the ninth. Alejandro Lara at the plate. He's one for three. He's also struck out once today. And Higdon trying to close things down here, get out number three for the Dads. First pitch here to Lara. It's in there on the outer half for strike one, count 0-1, two runners on. Crawdads. Just one out away from getting back above 500 here in game number 10. The only way they can do that is because one game has not gone final yet. That's the game against Sonoma. And the 0-1 from Higdon. This is a fastball that misses low and away. Count even now, a ball and a strike. Higdon. Steps back up onto the rubber. Looks in for his sign from Tejero. He sets. Not even worried about the runners on. Takes a quick glance back to second. The runners go. This pitch misses outside. It'll be a double steal after a check swing for Solano. So both runners now in scoring position. Bassetti over at second to sell at third. But I wonder if that's going to be called the steal or if it's just defensive indifference. I mean, those runners mean absolutely nothing they, at this point. They do not. Yeah, they, they don't mean a whole lot. What until would, Laura comes to until gets La on base. Unless Laura gets on base. So wonder if that will be scored. But both runners advance. And the 1-2. There's a check swing there on a pitch in the dirt. And... Yeah, he actually did cross the plane, and the tag applied by Tejero, and that's for out number three. And for some reason, a little strange argument there from the batter, Lara, but that is it for the ball game. And Higdon able to close it down, two innings of work, not give up any runs. It's a shutout victory this afternoon for the Crawdads. They win 4 nothing. Kind of a strange uh, end <laughs> of the game there. A weird. It looked like. Dads will take it. Well, yeah, the dads will take it. Uh, two runners are stranded there on second and third, but Laura acted like he didn't even uh, check at it, and Harvey Maxey quickly was like, no, that's a strike, and Tejero just picked it up and tagged him with the baseball, and that's how this one ends. The final line score, the Crawdads with four runs off five hits, no errors. That was a uh, welcome improvement this afternoon from the dads. Solano, on the other hand, who... Was in second place coming into this game in the CCL North. Uh, had no runs, obviously being shut out. They only recorded four hits, and they did have two costly errors. Uh, players of the game, you know, in, in a lot of situations, <laughs> you'd probably pick Coleman Schmidt, and he, you know, offensively, he definitely was with the two solo home runs to center, but you cannot overlook the work that uh, Ryan Fleming 
did today on the mound for the dads. I mean, he was he was lights out, and he he didn't do it with the strikeout, but I mean, he was he was pitching to contact, and and he was just pitching to the weak spots of the opposing hitters, and he was attacking their weaknesses pretty obviously. He got a ton of ground balls, ten ground ball outs, only gave up three hits. He was absolutely tremendous, and. This is a big momentum start for the Crawdads. Going into a really tough game against Healdsburg, I think they needed this. It, it, it had the bullpen get a day of rest. It had the bats, you know, play well enough. They scored four runs. I don't, I don't think it's it's great, but you'll take four runs just about every day on the board, and especially with the pitching they got today, it was huge. Yeah, with the pitching they got today, I mean, one run would have won it. Obviously, you want to see more than one, so they got four today and a uh, market improvement, uh, doubling their output from yesterday. And on the three-game homestand here at Monta Vista, they were able to take two out of three. So a good job by the Dads, a good win for the Crawdads and manager Brant Cummings. And they'll be on the road tomorrow in Healdsburg for everyone up here in the booth. For Austin Oda, I'm Alon Desai. Thanks for joining us for Crawdads Baseball. We'll see you again tomorrow at 6 p.m. from Healdsburg.